Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video we're going to look at pacemaker potentials. What we're trying to examine here is why is it that the heart, even if it's been removed from the body for at least a short amount of time, will continue to beat. Kind of important it's able to do that because no matter what's happening with the central nervous system, it would be nice if the pump that pumps blood around was still running and we'd like it if we never had to think about making sure the heart was beating, but that the heart beat just on its own, which is indeed what it does. So we're going to look at pacemaker potentials. And the way I like to do that is the same way we looked at action potentials. Sorry for the squeak. On a, we've got a graph here that has, again, on the y-axis, millivolts, and on the x-axis, time. Where this graph is going to differ from the other ones that I've done um, is that there's a lot more time involved. Um, the little bit of time that we looked at earlier might take up this much of this entire graph. Here is threshold as a dotted line just like last time. Only actually I should make it higher up. Here's threshold. And let's imagine that a heart that a heartbeat just happened. Whoops. That we depolarize and repolarize the membrane and we're back down here towards resting. If this were skeletal muscle, first of all, that spike would have required innervation. Skeletal muscle doesn't undergo action potentials unless a neuron um, tells it to, kind of. And then at resting, we would just continue at resting potential. But here's what's funky about the heart. <clears throat> In pacemaker cells, rather than staying at resting potential, the membrane voltage heads towards threshold and we get another spike. This then, when we get down to resting potential again, would head back up towards um, threshold again. This slope, this approaching threshold, that is basically what pacemaker potential is. So every time these pacemaker cells reach resting potential, when they hyperpolarize, they approach threshold again. Here's the reason for that. Um, just like with skeletal muscle cells, just like with other cardiac myocytes, the pacemaker cells have voltage-gated sodium channels, they have voltage-gated potassium channels, and of course, don't forget, voltage-gated calcium channels. But in addition to that, Pacemaker cells have HCN channels. And I don't require my students to memorize what HCN means, but just in case you care, these are, I should have um, written this out, so I decided to put this up here. Hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide gated channels. That's what these channels are. Hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide activated channels. Um, in terms of the way sympathetic effect works on them, that's where the cyclic nucleotide comes in. At any rate, these channels, when the membrane is hyperpolarized, they open and let sodium come in. When I learned this, they were called eccentric sodium channels, by the way, because they're eccentric, they're weird. The other sodium channels that we've talked about lead to action potential, and they get excited when we reach threshold. These hyperpolarization activated channels, the HCN channels, they get activated when the membrane is more negative and they cause it to approach threshold. Okay, so we've established that the brain's not necessary to cause the heart to beat. It'll beat rhythmically whether there is innervation going to it or not. But how can the brain control the rate of the heartbeat? And that is actually where the brain has its effect on the heart. It can cause the heart to speed up its rate, or it can cause the heart to slow down its rate. Let's look at that part of it. Using this same graph. Again, look at the slope of this line. Here's one heartbeat back here. And then we get to resting potential, and we start to approach threshold. Again, and once we reach threshold, bam, we get another heart rate, or another heartbeat. So from here to here, that's the space between two heartbeats, perhaps. If we want the heart to beat faster, 
we just have to decrease this space. And indeed, for sympathetic effect, that's exactly what happens. The slope of the pacemaker potential becomes more steep and we approach threshold more quickly and that causes the heart to beat more frequently or to increase the heart rate. So again this would be sympathetic effect. The way that's mediated um, Epinephrine or norepinephrine binds to its receptor. That leads to uh, the receptor is a G-protein coupled receptor, and the G-protein binds to an adenyl adenylate cyclase, which causes the production of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP can then bind to that HCN channel and cause it to open more, and that causes more sodium to enter, and we approach threshold faster. Let's look at parasympathetic effect. Again, the slope of the line is going to determine the heart rate. If we decrease the slope of this line, sorry for the squeaking, but if we decrease that slope, then we're going to approach threshold less quickly. It's going to take more time to reach threshold, more distance between heartbeats, decrease in the cardiac rate. So this slope right here is going to represent parasympathetic effect. For parasympathetic effect, the receptor is an acetylcholine receptor. It's a muscarinic acetylcholine receptor, which is also a G-protein coupled receptor. In this case, what happens though is when acetylcholine binds to its muscarinic acetylcholine receptor, the G-protein is released from the receptor and it binds to a potassium channel. That potassium channel opens, potassium leaves the cell, and the membrane has a tendency to become more negative that causes it to take longer to approach threshold. Um, atropine is a drug that can be given to cause the heart to increase in its rate. What atropine does is it inhibits the receptor for the acetylcholine, that muscarinic receptor. By inhibiting that receptor you inhibit parasympathetic effect and that causes the heart to beat faster. Clinically, for sympathetic effect, you can simply inject um, epinephrine and see the heart rate increase. And obviously, if you gave both drugs, you'd be inhibiting this and exciting this, and you'd really see a fast heart rate. I think that's good for pacemaker potentials. I hope it helps you understand why the heart can beat without the brain interfering with it and helps you understand how the brain can help the heart to speed up or slow down as required by the body's in, in order for the body to maintain homeostasis. As always, thank you again for watching, and if there's any questions or anything, please feel free to contact me. Thanks again.